what's happening to my boxwoods? Well, if it's in the spring and your boxwoods start looking like this, and when you look real close, you're going to see a fuzzy appearance to the new growth. And if you turn your boxwood over, you're going to see this growth of something. It looks like little tiny tufts of cotton and both in the bottom of the leaf along the stem of the leaf and on top of the leaf. This is known as an insect pest. This insect is like an aphid. It sucks the juices out of what I call nice new green leaves. They're not dark leaves, not leaves like you get down at the bottom that are dark and green that I'll show you more of in just a couple minutes. This insect is called the boxwood psyllid. Now, it, it looks like an aphid, but it coats the new growth that occurs on boxwood that are not treated with any kind of an insecticide. Insecticide is something that controls insects. And there are so many boxwood psyllids on this plant that the honeydew and part of the insect is covering the ground. And honeydew is uh, it's also what aphids produce. This insect sucks the juices out of the new leaves and it exudes what is known as honeydew, a sweet sugary substance. And that covers the foliage here and it also covers the ground. Now, one of the other signs that you have boxwood psyllids, and you really have to sometimes look close at the leaves, is the leaves become very cupped. And, and maybe this is a great example. This is an upside down leaf here and it's cupped. When you set it, let's try to get a regular leaf here. The regular leaf is nice and flat, but when the boxwood psyllids suck the juices out of the leaf, that part of the leaf dies. The rest of the leaf grows. And as it grows, it looks like it's cupped and it actually does something different. This is another sign that you have boxwood psyllids. If you look at this leaf here, you can see all the leaves are contorted and tufted up together. This for example, I got another good example of last year's growth. Look at how the leaves become tough. So, if you're using your boxwood for kissing balls, for arrangements, instead of getting nice flat growth, when you go to pick your boxwood, this is what you end up with. Balls that look like this. Unusable boxwoods. And you can see on here what happens to the leaves that the boxwoods feed on 
It may not be real easy to see, but some of the leaves um, are chlorotic. And what chlor chlorotic or chlorosis means, there's yellowing on the leaves because the boxwood psyllids have damaged the leaves. They're no longer nice and green. So you can see these balls that cover the boxwood. Now, there is a three week, four week window in the spring. It may depend on where you live, but any time from April 2nd to May 15th, depending on the weather, uh, dictates when these boxwood psyllids come out. I'm going to show you something that some of you probably wouldn't do. At least it's not spiders. I do see spider webs here. Now, I personally like spiders. And there's a couple I don't like. But spiders mean you have a nice and healthy and rich organic environment. In a lot of cases, I don't uh, try to spray the spiders. In the fields, I have one of those headlamps. And standing in one spot, you can see hundreds of spider eyes. In fact, I would bet you to some areas I can see thousands of spider eyes. They're waiting in the grass to attack insects for food. But let me show you what's going to happen. I'm going to scoot down a little bit. And I am going to go ahead and take my arm and... And I'm going to try to get some boxwood psyllids themselves. So, you can see all the tufts from the boxwood psyllid. Now, right there at the edge of my uh, fingernail there, you can see a boxwood psyllid crawling. You can see another one crawling. And now this plant is loaded with boxwood psyllids. I have other plants around here that just have a few, but you can see all of what they exuded and Let's see if we can get a couple more. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Look at them all here. There's got to be a hundred boxwood cells. Now, that is a lot. That means that this plant is going to be filled with this what you're looking at here in the fall an unusable unusable plant now uh, many uh, insecticides can be used you spray around this as with any insecticide it's important that you read the label i have known of people that have mixed molasses and coated their plant uh, with, uh, I don't remember the rate, but it, it stuck to the foliage and it made it where the boxwood psyllids couldn't move. And this person called that her organic formula. I'm Mark Viet. I live in the Shenandoah Valley. Please tune in to more of our other garden videos. Some boxwood get big. Uh, this has probably been here 150 years, maybe. But it's 22 feet tall. And I sprayed it last year for the boxwood psyllid, but didn't do a great job spraying it. Some of it has no boxwood psyllid at all. But you can look right here, boxwood psyllid. If you look right here at the spider web, some of the 
honeydew and other parts. Uh, what I'm noticing is uh, the boxwood psyllid when they're young, they seem to have a lot of cottony tufts to them. As they mature, that sheds off and it gets caught in the spider web. Now, this would need to be sprayed. In fact, I'm going to spray it today because if not, all of these tips of these branches are going to look awful. And you can see where we pruned some last year to make boxwood wreaths, which are very popular uh, in some homes. But I'm going to spray all of this, and within 24 to 36 hours, hopefully these insect pests are gone. But this insect even affects 22 to 24 foot tall boxwoods.